Today, uh, we're going to be in the book of Acts, Acts the fifth chapter. We've been talking about Ananias and Sapphira, and in Acts the fifth chapter, uh, at, the, at the third verse, Acts 5 and 2, uh, excuse me, Acts 5 and 3, it speaks about uh, the following, it says, But Peter said, Ananias, why hath Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? Now, of course, we know that Ananias keeping back and Sapphira keeping back part of the price of the land was not the sin. The sin was, or at least one of the sins that they committed, was that he had lied. Okay? And we gave Old Testament and New Testament passages talking about how God does not approve of lying. <laughs> All right, we talked about that last week. But there is another sin that was committed here uh, that was uh, just as grievous as lying. And we'll see what that other sin is here in a moment. Let's start at uh, verse number 3 and read through to the part about Sapphira. Okay, Acts 5 and 3, it says, But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? While it's remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. And Ananias, hearing those words, fell down, gave up the ghost, and great fear came on all them that heard these things. And the young men arose, wound him up, and carried him out, and buried him. And then uh, verse 7, it says, and, spe- and it was about the space of three hours after when his wife, this is Sapphira, not knowing what was done, came in. And Peter answered her unto her, tell me whether ye sold the land for so much? And she said, yea, for so much. And then look what Peter says here in verse 9. He says, then Peter said unto her, how is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the spirit of the Lord. Notice, he doesn't say, why is it that you lied to the Holy Ghost? Yeah. He says, why have you agreed together to tempt the spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door, and shall carry thee out. And she fell, and, she, and then fell she down straightway at his feet, and yielded up the ghost. And the young men came in, found her dead, carrying her forth, buried her by her husband. Now, we see right here that she, uh, Sapphira, had agreed with her husband to commit this sin. Well, they lied, but then, but it was premeditated. But this was part of what we would call conspiring. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now, here's the thing. ¿Cómo se dice eso en español? Con. Con. Okay. All right. And ¿cómo se dice breathe en español? Respirar. Respirar. Okay. So you get to learn Spanish while you're here. It's not just Bible study, it's Spanish. You got con, which means with, and you got respirar, which means to breathe, you got this part right here, spira, con, spira, con, spira. conspire. And what that means is to come together as one breath, spira, this is also where we get the word spirit from, it means to come together as one spirit. This is where we get conspire, this is where we get the word conspiracy from, okay? How many times have you heard where somebody would say, oh, I can't make it to the birthday party, but I'll be there with you in spirit. You're not there physically, but you're there emotionally or or, or spiritually. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Okay, so you're, you're agreeing with that individual who's actually doing whatever they're going to do. So you're with you're with the person as one breath or you're with the person as one spirit, okay? Do you know that people can go to jail for conspiracy? There are people in jail right now who are in jail because of conspiracy to commit murder. That's crazy. Right? They weren't there at the scene, but evidence shows that they were in on the action, that they approved or signed off on, you know, a lot of, you know, you've heard these stories about uh, um, 
you know, a, a husband will hire a hitman, right, to, to take out his wife or something. Or, or, or wife. Or right. Or vice versa. The wife will hire. Uh, the, right. Okay. We, we keep it. We'll, 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 we'll make that even here. It could go either way. But a spouse will hire somebody to, to you know, kill the other spouse. All right. Well, they are in agreement with that murderer. So not only is the murderer sinning, but the person who agreed with it conspired or was as with one breath or one spirit was in agreement with that individual to commit evil, all right? So you say, where are we going with all this? Where are we going is, 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 is that not only was Ananias and Sapphira guilty of lying, which is a sin, they were also guilty of conspiring and conspiracy to do evil. Mm-hmm. And this is why Peter doesn't repeat himself here and say, why have you been guilty, you know, why did you lie to the Holy Ghost? He said, why have you agreed together in, in your heart to do this thing? All right? And the Lord, and, and if, if there was a title for today's Sunday school lesson, it would be called Conspiracy According to the King James Bible. But uh, the Lord does not approve of it when we conspire to do evil. Yeah. All right? And we're going to give you some Old and New Testament examples of this so you have, you'll better understand what we're talking about. I want you to keep your place here in the book of Acts. But I want you to turn to the book of Psalms, the book of Psalms. Uh, let's try Psalms 50 and 18. All right, this is going to be, if you go too far to your right, you'll be in Proverbs. If you turn too far to your left, you'll be like in Job somewhere. Psalm 50 and 18, I believe, is what I'm looking for. Psalm 50 and 18, are we there? Okay, look what it says right here. It says, when thou sawest a thief, then thou consentest with him and hast been partaker with adulterers. Y'all see that? Okay. If you have a, a neighbor and you see a thief break into your neighbor's house and you see it, but you don't act upon it, let your neighbor know or call the police or something of that nature, according to the scripture, you're, you're a partaker. Are you following me? You're partaking because you, you're, you're saying, oh, well, that's not my business, right? But you're, you've come into the agreement with that thief unless you know that thief and you go up to that thief and say, hey, man, what are you doing? Stop what you're doing. Mm-hmm. But if, if you don't do anything to, pre- and to actively thwart the sin, you're partaking in it. Yeah. All right, let me give you another example. Uh, turn to the book of Exodus, Genesis, Exodus, and turn to the 23rd chapter. And we actually... Uh, hit upon this a little bit in last Sunday's lesson when talking about lying. If you look at the 23rd chapter of Exodus, Genesis, Exodus. All right, are we there? Look what the scripture says. Thou shalt not raise a false report. We talked about this last week when, yes? I'm sorry, uh, the very first verse of Exodus 23. Very first verse of Exodus 23. Thou shalt not raise a false report. We talked about that. That's relating to lying. Thou shalt not bear false witness, etc. But look what else it says. Put not thine hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness. Verse number two. Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do what? Evil. Evil. Neither shalt thou speak in a cause to decline after many to rest judgment. We're not to follow after or agree or go into fellowship with someone who is to commit evil. All right. We're not to conspire to commit evil or follow after those who would commit evil. All right. Now, let's look at some more proof texts here. And we and um, we also have some proof texts in the New Testament. So let me give you that as well while we're at it. Um, I want you to keep your place in song and song. Well, we're going to go to Proverbs here in a moment. But if you're able to turn to the book of Romans, Romans, Acts, uh, Matthew, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans. First chapter of Romans, first chapter of Romans, and the 32nd verse, first chapter of Romans, 32nd verse, I'll read this for the sake of time, first chapter of Romans, the 32nd verse, uh, it says, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. These are people who know, and it gives a list of sins prior to, to verse 32. It gives a list of all these, these evils and wickedness and sin. And it says, there are people who know the judgment of God, and they see people doing evil, but they have pleasure in it, and they go along with it. 
Well, that's not pleasing to the Lord. Uh, let's go to 1 Timothy 5.22. This is going to be in your tea books. You know you have 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, and Titus. We're going to go to 1 Timothy 5.22. I'll read this for the sake of time. 1 Timothy... Uh, that's not the verse I am looking for. Oh, yeah. Hold on. I'm in Ephesians. I'm sorry. Yeah. First Timothy 5.22, yes, sir. It says, lay hands suddenly on no man, neither be partaker of another of other men's what? Sins. Sins. Keep thyself pure. Yeah. Y'all see that? So what's echoed in the Old Testament, it's also echoed in the New Testament. Let me give you some more here because um, the reason I want to give you all this proof text is, is so that you never think I'm just pulling out one or two verses to try to build up a doctrinal statement. I'm here to show you that it's all over scripture. Um, let's look at um, Proverbs. Let's go back to Proverbs. Look at Proverbs 1.10. Proverbs is after the book of Psalm. Proverbs 1.1. Proverbs 1, first chapter of Proverbs. First pro- chapter of Proverbs. And look at the 10th verse. Proverbs 1.10. It says, my son, if sinners entice thee, consent thee not. Y'all see that? If sinners entice thee, consent thee not. Say no. Say no. If sinners entice thee, consent thee not. Say no. 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 Say no to your friends who want you to sin. Say no to the devil who wants to win. When sin is enticed, thee sin, thee not. Say no, no, no. All right? Now, y'all probably say, the Sunday school teacher is crazy, but I guess, I bet you'll never forget that verse now, will you? You're welcome. Okay? But, but here, here's a case where we have to, uh, the scripture is telling us over and over again to be careful uh, with conspiring with others to get into sin. All right? I remember, and I've, I've told this story to my wife about a month ago. I remember the first time that uh, I saw a rated R movie. All right? Uh, it was a month of us. It was, it was, uh, we went to a movie theater, which was 20 miles from where we lived, because we lived in the country, so you had to ride a little piece. And we were 14-year-olds, because you got to be, what, 16 or 17? What's, what's the age? You got to be 17 to see a rated R movie? So, you know, you know. But <laughs> I know, you know. But anyway, during this time, I, uh, there was three of us. We were 14. We had one 15-year-old. And so we, uh, in the state of Mississippi, you can drive at 14 and 15. So we drove to this um, cinema, and we bought tickets to a rated G movie, Cinderella or something lame, you know. And then um, one of my friends said, well, hey, you know, this movie is playing, it was ready, you know, and the attendant's not here, let's sneak in. Yeah. Okay, and so I didn't follow this scripture. It says, if sinners entice thee, consent thee not. You see? So I conspired with them. We went and saw the movie. Before we got back to the house, my mom had found out about it. How in the world to this day? And she took that to her grave, by the way. She never told me how she found out about it when there was no such thing as cell phones and internet when I was a kid. And we were 20 miles outside of town. How she found out about it, to this day, I have no idea. (laughs) So to this day, I do not know. But I got in trouble for that. I got in trouble for that, okay? Because that's just something that, you, you know, I wasn't supposed to do. But I conspired with my friends to commit that evil. But the scripture clearly teaches us in both Old and New Testaments not to conspire to do evil. Mm-hmm. All right? If sinners entice thee, consent thee not. All right? Let's look at uh, verse, uh, Proverbs 17, 15. I'm going to give you another proof text. Proverbs 17, 15. Proverbs 17, 15. It says, He that justified the wicked and condemneth the just... Even they both are an abomination to the Lord. Okay, if you try to justify wickedness, that's an abomination to the Lord. Okay. Um, 
one more, and this is good. This is why you need to hang around, save born again children of God if possible. Look at uh, Proverbs twenty seven seventeen. Proverbs twenty seven seventeen. And this is a passage of scripture that I know Miss Rachel has, has quoted in this class before. Uh, Proverbs twenty seven seventeen it says, Iron is sharp of iron, so a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friends. All right. So it's good to come along somebody who can hold you accountable. <coughs> Just like iron and sharp, sharp with iron. Yeah. All right? The countenance of, uh, uh, so, uh, so I, can, I get this mixed up every time. So a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friends. All right? It's always very important to have another believer that you're close to that you can count on and you, and you both can, can bounce things off of each other. All right? And the, the scripture even in, endorses that. All right. So uh, with that said, let's go back to Acts, the, the fifth chapter of uh, the second sin that was committed here by Ananias and Sapphira. It was not just the sin of lying. It was also the sin of conspiring. All right. Now, I know in, you know, in the perfect romantic world, we like to think if for those of you who are married, you know, well, when it comes to my spouse, we're flesh of my flesh, bone of my bone. We can discuss, we can talk about anything together. We're comfortable, we can share anything with each other. One thing that spouses should not be comfortable discussing with each other is entering into sin together. You should be very uncomfortable. As a matter of fact, you shouldn't even bring it up. Oh, honey, uh, I'm getting ready to ro rob a bank. Do you want to go with me? <laughs> All right. You, that you should be very uncomfortable having that conversation with your spouse. All right. Um, okay. So. I would say if anything, a spouse balances you. It gives you accountability. So yes, the fact yes. that you two are coming together in agreement in sin is like huge, right? Because you have to get two people to agree yes. on that. Yes. Um, and going against morals if they have any. Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm sorry, what did you say, Miss Stephanie? It keeps me scared to make certain decisions. Be oh, because you have an accountability partner. Because you have an accountability partner, right? Yes, 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 and and that's and, and that's the you know. Huh? You fell? You fell down? What? Okay, we're getting out of hand here. Okay. Say no, no, no. Okay. Um, yes. So um, uh, th th these are things that, that um, comes out of this particular passage is that we should be uh, mindful uh, not to lie against the, the Lord and, or lie, period. And more importantly, uh, don't be involved in conspiracy. If you see something going on, if it's a coworker, friend, don't consent to go along just for the sake of going on because that's uh, evil against the Lord. Amos 3.3 3 says, how can two walk together except they agree? Yeah. All right. And so if you're going to come into agreement with someone, make sure that what you're coming into agreement with is going to be something that's going to be honoring to the Lord. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. So um, one other point that we may want to bring out here. Uh, and we're going to have to dismiss. We're not going to be able to get out of this passage for some reason. Um, uh, a, couple of, a couple of months ago, we talked about uh, how public giving is biblical. And we demonstrated that from the previous chapter in chapter number four, Acts the fourth chapter, towards the end, where the people were volunteering uh, the selling of their property and their land, and they were bringing the money to the disciples' uh, feet. Um, and that was an example of public giving. While public giving may be biblical, it may not necessarily be preferable, preferable as far as what Jesus uh, has to say about that. And let me explain to you what I mean. If you'll turn to Matthew uh, the sixth chapter and look at your fourth verse, Matthew six and four, and there are cases in history where Jesus provide, pres presided over public giving, but I just want to show you something here. Matthew 6, 4, uh, we'll start at the third verse, um, Matthew 6 and 3. 
and this is Jesus talking, he said, but when thou doest alms, that means to do free will giving or to, to give to the poor, you're helping somebody out to give. It says, when thou give, when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth, <laughs> that thine alms may be in secret, and the Father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. All right? So while there's nothing wrong with public giving, as they did towards the end of the Acts, the fourth chapter, Jesus has a preference for private giving. All right? And, of course, he's using a metaphor here where he says, don't let your right hand know what your left hand is doing. you got one brain. So he, he's, he's just saying that it, uh, when you give, you don't want to give and sound a trumpet and say, oh, look how great I am. I'm giving $1,000 to the church. You know, yeah, don't be boastful when you give, all right? Be, uh, have a humble heart. Have a humble heart. And another thing, too, um, is that if there had been private giving at the end of the fourth chapter, Ananias and Sapphira may not have been tempted to have done what they did. They did what they did because they saw Barnabas and these other guys getting accolades for selling their land and bringing it to the apostles' feet. And then they said, hey, we want to get in on that. We want people to think that we're great Christians. And so they did the same thing, but because their heart wasn't right, uh, Brother John had mentioned uh, several weeks ago in a passage he's talked about where it said the Lord loves a cheerful giver. Yeah. And so if you're not giving cheerfully, you shouldn't give at all yeah. because God is, is checking your heart. He's not checking your wallet. Yeah. Okay, it's with the heart. How are you giving? All right. And because these people were their heart wasn't right and there wasn't and they didn't they weren't doing what they were doing out of the goodness of their heart. But they were doing it so that they could get accolades like Barnabas, mm -hmm. OK, whose surname was Joseph. So they were trying to keep up with the Joseph's. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> keep up with the, okay, all right, okay, but anyway, because his surname was yep. just in, okay, but, um, <laughs> um, but because, but because they saw this public giving, they wanted to get in on the act, and they gave, but they gave with the wrong heart. And it actually wound up costing both of them their lives. Whereas if there had been some private giving going on where they say, hey, you know, hey, you know, Peter, here, put that in the pot. Don't tell nobody. All right. That's what Jesus would have preferred, and he says that in the Word. Yeah. So is that okay? Amen. All right. So when you, yes, go ahead. Mm -hmm. So if they had gone in and said, we sold our land, and we're giving half of it to the church, that would have been Yes, as long as they hadn't lied about it. Yeah, yeah, because Peter told them in going back to Acts the fifth chapter, he said, "Was not the money your own? Was not the land your own? You could do whatever you want to with it." And it wasn't the fact that they only gave part of the money; is that they gave part of the money and lied and said that they had given all of the money. You see, they were defrauding the church, or really, uh, they were defrauding the Lord. They were defrauding God. And God made an example out of both of them by striking them dead to say, we're not going to have this in this church. <laughs> and he made an example out of it. And obviously it worked because if you read the scriptures, it says, and fear came upon all of them. All right. And let me show you one other thing here. And we're out of time. We got to go. Um, go back to Acts, the fifth chapter. Acts, the fifth chapter. I'm going to skip down here a little bit, but we'll discuss this next week. Look at the... Uh, Look at the uh, 13th verse of Acts, the 5th chapter, Acts 5.13. Acts 5.13, it says, And of the rest durst no man join himself to them, but the people magnified them. And you say, well, what is that talking about? Well, there were a lot of people, uh, when, the, when the word of God is being preached and taught, and when, and when you're seeing God work, people normally respond one or two different ways. They either gravitate towards the, God's word, because they, they, you know, they, they need God's word and they realize that they've come short of the glory of God and they need to have more exposure to God's word. Or you have some people who will back away because they don't want to expose their sin. Mm -hmm. All right. And it says here in this 13th verse, and the rest durst no man join himself to them. That meant that, they, that there were some outside the church who dared not step foot in the church because they had heard of what had happened to Ananias and Sapphira. Mm -hmm. And they knew that their hearts weren't right. 
Okay? And we, and we have that today. We have some people who don't come to church merely because they know that they're living in sin. And if they come here to this church and the preacher, he may not know what their sin is. But the Holy Ghost, the, the Holy Spirit of God may use preacher to preach a sermon. Yeah. And that sermon may convict them. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, oh, man, you know. Some people don't, don't want to feel bad about themselves. Yeah, yeah. Or, or some people don't want to know that they're committing sin. Or don't want to be, want to be reminded of their sin, yeah. all right? They don't want to be reminded that they need to stop living their, their wicked lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So they durst not enter the church. Yeah. Or they go to the big fun center. <laughs> or they go to the big fun center Chuck E. Cheese church yeah. that pass them on the head and tell them what a great person they are. Yeah. All right? And, and, and so that's what you have happening. But, but So you get one of those two reactions. You have those who are convicted. Like for me, I, I hear a sermon and I say, man, I say, that's a part of my life I need to fix. I need to, to, to get that right. And some people respond positive to, positively mm -hmm. to discipline. And some people do not respond so positively. Yeah. And so we see that here in verse 13, where the, you know, uh, verse 11, it says, great fear came upon the church. And uh, many people were on one accord, and uh, many people came together. But in verse 13, well, look at, look at verse 14, excuse me. It says, and believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes both of men and women. Y'all see that? So you had one or two reactions. You had some people that said, oh, I'm not fooling around with them because I know my life's not right. But by the same token, there were other people who said, I'm going to join this church because the word of God is being preached here and more believers were added. Yeah. So you get one or two reactions. We have that same thing going on today. Yeah. Amen. You see that? Okay. So we're out of time, uh, but we'll uh, pick this up for next.